back to the YouTube channel of Pro Enzo Vids, and I believe it's the day, it's the time to finally release my NRL 2022 ladder predictions. So, yeah, um, look, it's uh, a bit different to some people's, I think, because um, from what I've seen, people have had you know different teams elsewhere co compared to what I've had, um, and that. So, yeah, hopefully uh, most of you can agree to it, but um, I, I will expect a bit of disagreements, which is which is fine because you know. Um, I can take criticism, I can take, you know, any disagreements, you know, I'm keen to hear it all pretty much. So, yeah, if you've got any anything to say about my predicted ladder for this year, then let me know in the comments down below because, yeah, I, I, I don't really care uh, if there's any disagreements because I'm more than happy to reply to it and just, um, you know, uh, talk about, you know, the reasoning behind the whole selection of this team being there or that team being there, you know. So, um, yeah, look, it's... Um, going to be good. Um, obviously, yeah, like I was saying, it's a bit early to release mine, but look, I, every year I, I usually announce it on January 30 or 31st, like some of the last days on January. So yeah, I just decided to do it now, you know. Um, you know, so yeah, look, um, hopefully you can all enjoy it. Um, and before I do start, just want to say thank you to more subscribers the last couple of days. I know I'm pretty much doing this every video, but you know, I have to give credit, credit where it's due, you know, because um, I'm just thankful to all the new people who have uh, recently subscribed to the channel. Um, now 1,380 subscribers. So by the maybe mid-February or at the end of February or maybe even earlier, I'm trying to aim, trying to get the aim to 1,300, no, 1,400 uh, subscribers by the end of uh, February or even any time between February. You know, so that's the aim right there. Um, but yeah, look. Without further ado, time to reveal my NRL 2022 ladder predictions. Right, coming in 16th place, my NRL 2022 Wood Spooners. I've got the North Queensland Cowboys. Now, I understand I've got a couple of really good uh, mates who go for the Cowboys. I get it, but unfortunately, that can't change my mind on how the Cowboys will go this season. I just think, you know, they're a team with potential and promise. Like, I don't hate the Cowboys at all. I think they're a, a very good side, and, you know, I've always liked them as a side overall. But I just think that this year... They look very skinny in the forwards, in my opinion. Um, yeah, look, I know they've got like, a lot of young forwards coming up and everything, but still, they're unproven, they're unknown. So until they make a first-grade debut or play an, an actual NRL game, then until then, I can't really judge on that. But, yeah, in my opinion, they look very they look very skinny in terms of the front row because I think having a, a front row combination of Cohen Hess and Jordan McLean won't take you really um, to any sort of real heights, I uh, suppose. So... Um, I really think they lack a bit of good forwards, the Cowboys. Like, like, they, like, they lack a star forward, in my opinion, like a really star forward. And, um, you know, I think their back line looks better. Like, I think their back line looks good with Hamiso, Felt, you know. Hiku's an alright buy, but Hiku's getting older now. And I don't think he's really showing what he used to do, in my opinion. Um, you know, I think their back line is, is good, but, you know, I still think... Um, I still think it's not you know great enough. It's it's good, but it's not great enough to be anything higher than a bottom a bottom four finish in my opinion. Um, the halves, yeah, Chad Townsend's an all right buy, but I think he's been way way too overpaid in my opinion, Townsend. And I just think as well, his halves partner. I don't, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've been hearing Tom Dean could be the halves partner for Townsend. If, that, if that's the case, then you know I hope it works well, but I just don't think it's uh, anything amazing. Like I can't really see it clicking straight away or can't really click at, at all to be honest so yeah that's just my opinion on the cowboys i really think i'll come 16th in my opinion and one last thing i don't believe the cowboys can do anything with todd Payne at the club i think he's the first coach to be sacked in 2022 in 15th place i've got the newcastle knights now i know this is a bit a bit of a big call because you know it's a bit of a drop from the knights finishing seventh the past two years and dropping down to 15th like you know the 2016 2017 days but you know I just think this year the Newcastle Knights look a lot skinnier overall as a squad. I mean, losing um, Mitchell Pearce is pretty big. I know he's getting older Pearce, but, you know, his experience and his leadership is something that the Knights are going to lack during the year. And um, I believe his departure is going to be very costly in many games for the Knights this year. And they'll be reflected as well in some games they play. Um, I also believe, you know, the talk around Caelan Ponga going to the Dolphins will affect their season as well. Cause, and I think Dolphins, you know... The Dolphins will be probably after a lot of players across the season. So that's where they could affect some teams 
But um, I think Newcastle in particular will be very affected because Ponga is obviously a big name player. He's a you know their best, probably one of their best players at the club, if not the best player there. So. I guess, you know, and apparently the Dolphins are already offering him a million-dollar contract. So, you know, I think that's going to be a distraction for the whole year, to be honest. The Ponga and Dolphins situation, it's going to kind of um, wreck their season. And also, another thing that's going to wreck their season as well is having no Jay and Braley for, like, a couple of months, you know. Braley's going to be gone for, like, six to nine months with an um, ACL injury, I'm pretty sure. No, yeah, an ACL injury, I think. So he'll be gone for a long time, and they're going to have Chris Randall or somebody playing hooker, which I'm not really keen on. You know, you know. I just think that they're a bit inexperienced now with like no Pierce, no Braley being there, and also I guess their forward pack is still good, but um, I just think their forward pack won't do enough. Their backs can't create anything for them to to play off the back of, and, and um, I mean uh, apparently their their lock's gonna be Kurt Mann now. I I think Kurt Mann playing lock playing lock is an absolute stupid decision. So if that's if that's true from what I'm hearing, then that that just shows their. Uh, that just shows they're going the wrong the wrong direction with having that man at lock. I'm not keen on that, but yeah. So until then, I have Knights coming fifteenth. Now I guess you can say this is another controversial one, but in fourteenth place, I've got the Gold Coast Titans. Um, now a couple a couple of reasons why I support um supporting this um positioning for the Titans is because I think Titans have the the most inexperienced spine in the NRL, I believe, and um I think a spine of Campbell. Brimson, Sexton and Clark won't be top eight material and it will take a bit of time for it to all gel, I suppose, as well. And, um, yeah, I think Titans are going to go backwards, in my opinion. I can't really see them doing anything amazing. You know, they were lucky to make the top eight last year, in my opinion, but they made it, which was good for them. But this year, I think they'll dramatically go down. Um, I think their back line as well doesn't really impress me. Like, their back line has some okay players like Campbell, Kelly... And, and that, but other than that, I just don't think, you know, there's any real superstar winger center in that team, so that's another thing I'm kind of concerned about with the Titans, and I guess as well, you know, they let go of their most experienced halfback, Jamal Fogarty, to go to the Raiders, so, you know, they have a, a combination of Brimson and, and Sexton, you know, Brimson hasn't played a full, you know, hasn't played full-time at 5'8 since 2018 in, in like, his rookie season. So it's going to take a bit of time for him to, you know, find his feet in that position again. And uh, Toby Sexton, you know, he's a good kid, I reckon, Sexton. But, you know, I think if he couldn't really do it, then, what, then, you know, how is he supposed to lead this first-grade Titans team around, you know? So a lot of questions about the Gold Coast Titans. But until then, I have them coming 14th, in my opinion. Now, in 13th place, I've got, got the West Tigers. Um, look... I think Tigers are a team where they can be good in some patches, but on the other times, they're not really consistent or that great, to be honest. Um, I like how they signed Jackson Hastings. I think that's a big signing. I think Hastings will go very well and will um, provide a lot of impact for that team in general, but I just think their forward pack still is very bad. Um, I mean, apart from Stefano and maybe Leilua, um, I, just, I think the rest, is, the rest is pretty average, to be honest. Um, the hooker position is a concern as well for the Tigers. You know, I think, um, you know, I don't rate Jacob Little. I think Little's really um, average at best, and he's not really a hooker that I really rate as well. Um, so I think he's a, a, bit of, a, bit, a bit of a concern for that Tigers team going forward, I suppose. And, um, you know, I don't rate the back line as highly as some people do. Like, I think Gildard's a good signing and all, but we've seen what's happened before when... Um, Super League centre wingers have come over to the NRL. They don't really, you know, rep, rep, replicate the same form they have in the Super League coming in the NRL. So, will that, will that be the same case with Gilda? We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, wish him all the best. But, uh, yeah, and if they're still going to, you know, persist with Luke Brooks as their halfback, then I can't see him doing any, anything because Brooks has proven to be a failure. He's proven that he can't handle big games or can't handle, you know, the heat when um, it's on him to provide. So I can't trust him either, to be honest. But um, they should go okay, but I don't trust them again, Tigers. So Tigers for 13th. Coming in number 12, I've got the New Zealand Warriors. Now, I believe the Warriors are a team that will improve this year. Not highly or not amazingly, but they will go better than what people have um, said. Um, I believe Sean Johnson's a big buy because, you know, the Warriors have got an actual halfback now. And I think, you know... With a good four pack like the Warriors have with Fanua Blake and you know players like um, Tahu Harris and and that in the side, I think Sean Johnson will benefit playing off the back of those sort of guys. So I think that's going to help the Warriors, you know, sort of um, 
you know, sort of be a bit more competitive this year in 2022. Um, I think they've still got a strong back line. I mean, I guess losing Mamala and Fusatua and Tuvasa Sheka, a little bit of little bit of blows, I guess. But um, you know, Walsh will get better, I suppose. As well, he'll get better. Um, I'd say players like Montoya, who improved last year, which should go a bit better as well. Um, I think. I think as well, you know, it depends on who partners with uh, Sean Johnson, you know, in the halves. I think apparently Ash Taylor's going to do it. Like, apparently they're going to select him as the halves partner for SJ. But, yeah, I'm not really keen on that, to be honest, because I think CHT, Harris DeVita is much, a much better option than our Taylor. But, you know, Taylor can be okay when he's on. So, we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, I think Warriors will go okay. I think they'll have, I think they'll have a solid season. Won't do anything amazing, but we'll be solid. But, um, yeah, will they go well enough to... Uh, make sure Nathan Brown su- uh, survives his job as coach at the YNC. But until then, Warriors for 12th place. Now, last year's wooden spoon is the Bulldogs. I believe they will improve a lot and come 11th. Now, people are saying they'll come top eight because of Burden and Addo Card Naden, but, you know, that's not what will drive them to the eight. What will drive them to the finals would be getting a better halfback at hooker first, in my opinion. But, um... Until then, I think the Bulldogs will improve and they will, you know, finish at least outside the bottom four of the team they have, you know. I believe the aim for the Bulldogs is to finish at least around 12th to maybe 9th or 8th. I believe that's the realistic aim for that club in 2022. And, um, yeah, look, I think they've recruited very well. I think I think the recruits like Pango Jr., Burden, Adokar, Naden, and um, Vaughan, they'll all provide an impact in some way because they're very experienced players with, you know, well, who have who are proven, I suppose, as well. Um, so I reckon they'll they'll go well. The Bulldogs, like I really think they'll go well and um, might be a lot more competitive than what they were in the past couple of years. You know, I think they're on the up. The Bulldogs, and um, yeah, I think they'll finish eleventh. But um, until then, until then, I just don't trust them to make the top eight just yet. Coming in tenth place, I've got the Saint George Illawarra Dragons. Um, look, I really think the Dragons are a team that's going to go really well this year. I think the signings of Moses Suli, Jaden Sua, Francis Molo, and that I really think that's going to help their squad a lot, and they'll play a lot better than what they have uh, been dishing up recently. Um, yeah, I like the team. You know, I think they've got a team with a lot of potential. Uh, Tyro Sloan's a good young rookie fullback who should improve a lot this year. Um, you know, Tyler Tamane will apparently be the new Dragons 5'8", um, combining with uh, Ben Hunt, the halfback. So keen to see how that, how that goes. But at the same time, I think that's going to take a bit of a while to grow, in my opinion. Um, yeah, their, their back line looks strong with uh, Lomax and Sully being the centres. And I think the outside men of um, either Fiagi, Ramsey, and the other winger being Ravalawa, you know, that's pretty strong as well. Um, the four pack's not that bad. Um, just hoping they don't put the building that prop and don't put uh, Bird um, in the, at, lock, at lock. You know, I'm not, not a fan of that personally. Um, yeah, overall, it's a pretty decent team. They definitely have strength in their team quite a bit, the Dragons. But yeah, I, I can't see them cracking the eight just yet. I can't trust them yet. They're, just, they're a bit inconsistent for mine. So yeah, see how, they go, see how they go this year. It'll be interesting, but I just can't trust them yet for a top eight finish. So until then, Dragons 10th in my opinion. Yep, this is probably the most boldest call out of, um, or so far in this latter prediction. I have the Parramatta Eels missing the top eight for 2022. I believe they'll come ninth. Now, everyone's going to go off at me and say, oh, why do you have them there? Oh, why do you not have them in the top eight? Oh, then this and that. But look, seriously, I think um, the Eels are a team where, you know, they've. I know they're not losing like many players until next year, but, you know, I think with those losses of Marnie and, you know, I guess players like Kafusi, uh, Papaliki and all that, it's going to cause a bit of um, havoc across their season, I reckon. It's going to definitely impact the squad and, and all that because, you know, it just shows that those uh, certain n- number of players that are leaving next year for the Eels are committed elsewhere. And, you know, it's going to kind of put most of the squad off for the Eels, I reckon, and it's going to cause a bit of a toxic sort of culture, I suppose, as well. So, yeah, just wait and see, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just don't think Parramatta will do anything this year. I think they're really going down as a, as a club, in my opinion. Uh, not because I hate them or anything, it's just because the way they're going with their recruitment and retention and everything like that and their past performances from last year, at the back end of last year, I should say, um, is reflecting to be a long season for the Eels, in my opinion. Um, look, they've still got a good team, like with Gutherson, Moses and 
Brown and uh, Marnie as a, as a spine that's very good. But yeah, I think you know, I think Marnie leaving is going to cause a bit of a issue because he's going to his biggest role as a bulldog. So that's going to cause a bit of a problem. Like I said, um, yeah, the look the back line's okay. I think it's still pretty strong, but you know, I can't can't fully trust it. Uh, their forwards are good, but again. I just think it's going to be a, a come down to a confidence thing for the Eels this year. And I just think they'll just miss out by a couple of points for the top eight. Yep, this is another controversial one. And it's very bold. But I truly believe it's going to happen. Like, I really think that the Raiders, as a club, will improve heaps in 2022 and will make the top eight again. Now, I explained this on a couple of um, other shows uh, on, on other people's YouTube channels about the Raiders, and I've said that the Raiders are a team that will improve a lot because they've got a real halfback now, and that will take a lot of pressure off uh, Jack Wyden, and I think Jack Wyden will find his best form again because he's got a real halfback next to him and won't have to, won't have to do too much and won't have to, you know, focus on leading the, leading the team. He'll just play what's in front of him, not be... Not having that pressure on him as you know being a leader, so Fogarty as the halfback is a very smart signing. Will be very good for the Raiders, um, and you know I guess as well the Raiders had a lot of drama last year. A lot of um, you know, yeah, had some ugly situations and everything with um, you know, to- like toxic culture and stuff like that. A lot of arguing, but you know. It's pretty easy to forget it all in the space of, what, 12 or something months. So, you know, I think they'll go better now, the Raiders. I think they've um, definitely built a better squad. I like Nick Kotrick being back at the club. I think Kotrick is going to be a, a big buy. Um, I know he didn't do much of the Bulldogs last year, but, you know, he's around a quality sort of team like the Raiders. So I think he'll get a lot of ball and will find his best again, best form. Um, I think, you know... Who plays fullback between Xavier Savage and Charles Dillard-Loxer will be very interesting, but, you know... I think either one of those guys will do a job because I think they're both very good players. Um, I'd go CNK personally, but Savage is a, is a special talent who might explode this year. So we'll see what happens there. But, um, you know, their four pack is still very strong as well. I think Papaliki will find his best form again, or Papali, um, you know, Tarpany, Whitehead, uh, uh, Harry Naira. You know, it's a, it's a very solid pack there. So I think Raiders are in for a good year. I really think they're going to do some good stuff this year. So Raiders for eighth. Coming in seventh place, another team that missed finals last year that will improve massively in 2022. I've got the Cronulla Southern Sharks. I think they've recruited very well as well. Um, they made some very strong signings and signed Nico Hines, Dale Finucane and uh, Cameron McGuinness. Um, so I think those signings will all play a bit of a big role in how the Sharks go this year. Um, I think the Sharks as well have a very good coach. I mean, I know he I know he hasn't been really proven as a first grade coach, but I think Craig Fitzgibbon, you know, the, the success he's, a, he's, a, he's achieved at the Roosters will uh, reflect on how the Sharks go as well. So I'm keen for that. Um, but look, overall, the Sharks have a good team. They had a lot of injuries and suspensions last year, remember? So if they can keep most of their 1-17 to 17 on the field uh, at full strength, then I think the Sharks are going to make the 8. I really think so. I really think they're a strong side when they're on, and I think they're a team that's going to, you know, be a lot more competitive and will challenge some of the bigger teams in 2022, you know. I guess the only real concern for me for the Sharks is that they're going to have, apparently, Matt Moyle and Nico Hines as the halves partners, which, you know, might go okay, but at the same time, you know, they're both very similar players. Like, where's who's the organiser? Who's the running player, you know? So it's a bit of a bit interesting that, but, you know, other than that, I, feel, I still think the Sharks have a good enough team to still make the top eight, so... Um, yeah, I like I like Kenny, I like Katoa, I like Miles Harlow and all sort of players, so they should go well with Sharks. So for me, Sharks will come seventh for 2022. Now, coming in number six, now this is another very bold call by myself and another very big prediction that, you know, some people may question, but I really believe the Broncos will finish uh, in the top six this year in 2022. Uh Based on a couple of things, of course, I think Adam Reynolds is going to be a very good buy. Um, I think he's easily one of the best sign- signings in the, in the NRL for this year. Um, I think his impact is going to be really, really big for, for the Broncos. He's going to, you know, do a, do a lot. And I think, you know, they've got a real halfback now. So I think when, whenever you have a, a quality halfback such as Reynolds, you know, you know you're going to get, he's going to get, get the job done for you and you know that you're in for a bit of success. So I think Reynolds is a huge buy for that club. Um... You know, I think Broncos have a great four pack as well. Like Payne Haas will get will get even get even better. Uh, Jordan Ricky is a great you know player as well. Kurt Cable is a great buy. I like Cable. Well, I think Cable is going to go well. Um, he's a very experienced player as well who has played at, uh, Origin. So I think he's going to strengthen their four pack as well with a bit of experience. Um, 
yeah, I like their forward pack overall, and their back line's pretty strong as well. You know, I will say, if they can keep Katoni Staggs in the field, like if Katoni Staggs can play a lot more games than he has the past couple of years, I think Staggs is in for a very good year and will definitely claim one bit to be one of the best centers in the NRL again. I think he already is one of the best centers in the game, but, you know, I think, you know, he'll be more talked about as one of the best centers in the comp and possibly come to Blues contention because he's that good of a player. I think, you know, if, if, if the injuries can remain below bar, then he'll go well for sure. And uh, I think Broncos have a lot of potential in that team. Like, Tessie New is going to get better. I really think Tyson Gamble will, will improve having and benefit having uh, Reynolds beside him as his um, Haas partner. I'm not sold Jake Turpin really as a hooker, but I think Turpin, you know, will go okay. And I think he'll do a job playing behind Reynolds, get, um, get, uh, get camp, uh, sorry, Gamble and uh, New. So, yeah, I think Broncos will go well. So, sixth place for me. Number five, I've got the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Yeah, now people are saying Rabbitohs will finish a lot lower, like 7th, 6th and 8th, and even potentially miss the top eight. Uh, look, I don't think they're going to finish that low. I still think Seattle's are a top six team, but they won't be you know, as good as what they've been in the past couple of years. Like, like I think Seattle's will drop a bit. They will lose a couple more games than they recently have. Um, but, you know, I still think they'll probably finish, in, finish around, you know, the... In the, in the top six, they finished close to the top four. I think they're a team that's um still got heaps of quality. You know, with you know with players like uh, Latron Mitchell, Cody Walker, Damien Cook, and um you know that those so those sort of guys are still gonna get them to the top eight for sure, and they're still gonna make them a lot a really good team, a lot stronger side. Um, I, I know Reynolds is a huge loss. Like Reynolds is a massive loss for that team, but I think over time Lockman Ellis will adapt to that halfback role, and I think he'll get uh, better as a player as well. So. I think, um, you know, that's uh, a bright thing for South Sydney is uh, Lachlan Ilyas' development as a player at halfback. Um, I'm not really sold on their four pack, to be honest. I, I think their four pack is very weak, in my opinion. Like, it's not terribly weak, but I think in some positions they're not, not really great. I think they, I think they lack a star front rower, in my opinion, and they lack a, a really... Um, I think they're like a bit of impact on the forwards, put it that way. But overall, they've still got a quality side. They've got a side that's going to make the top eight for sure, at least. So I think they'll make top eight, but not top four. So in my opinion, South's fifth. Now, coming to fourth place in the top four, I've got my boys and my team, the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles. Uh, I think Manly will go really well again. Uh, I think they should be at least in the top four again. I think if they finish outside the top, the top four again, then it's definitely a bit of a failure in my opinion. So they've got to finish in the top four at least somewhere. Um, I think our team looks pretty strong. You know, I think Tom, Tommy Turbo, Tom Trevojevic is a freak. You know, he'll, he'll still have a big season in my opinion. And uh, we'll definitely go close to winning the 2022 Daily M medalist. Um, I think you know having halves like Four and Sherry Evans is, is uh, a lot of quality and a lot of good experience there. So... I expect those two, those two to still um, turn up and provide a bit of an impact for that Manly team. Um, you know the the the, the back line's good with Saab and Harper and Parker. You know it's a, it's a good crop of players, so I think that's gonna be good for our season as well. Um, the four pack's good. I like uh, I like Hamal or the Kawats and Shu. So those two will be even better in twenty twenty two. I just gotta get a feeling. I uh, got Jake and uh, Marty to power up front, so you know it's a it's a good side. I reckon it's a really good team that I think will go even better in two thousand twenty two, and um, we'll definitely contend for the premiership for sure. So I've got Millie in top in uh, fourth place. Coming in third place, I've got the Melbourne Storm. A little bit of an interesting prediction because Storm never really finished outside of the top two, uh, but I think this year's the year they will because I think they've lost a lot of. A lot of good players, a lot of quality, a lot of um, you know, a lot of skill with Adokar, Fanukin, and you know, players like that leaving, I guess, will be very tough for them to take. Uh, Nelson won't be able to play Snuffs off of Solomona. Um, you know, that's a big that's a big loss at the same time. So, you know, this year the Storm have lost a lot of quality and I think that's gonna impact their season a bit, not having those sort of big name players there anymore. Um, I know they made some good signings in Xavier Coates and Nick Meany and all that, but I still think the Storm might go a, a tiny bit backwards this year. I don't think they'll go back backwards radically, but they will go back, backwards in some ways. So, um, And I think when I say backwards, I mean as in like they'll be a bit more beatable to some clubs. Like, you know, some clubs might be able to beat them a bit more easy than the past and might be a bit, a bit more exposed as a club, I think. So uh, Storm will be, will be competitive. They'll contend for the premiership. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, I just think they'll go backwards and... Um, you know, I think there's um, some good reasons why they'll go backwards. Like I said, you know, losing a lot of quality players and losing some actual championship players, you know, it's going to be tough. So 
Um, but they'll still go well. They'll still have a good season, but I just think they'll drop a bit. So Storm for third. Coming in second place, I've got the Sydney Roosters. Uh, Roosters are a team that, you know, if they can keep their big-name players like Kiri back in the field, you know, keep Tedesco in the field and keep most of their uh, talented squad in the field for 2022, they're going to make the top four for sure, I reckon. Like, I think the, the Roosters are a team that's going to uh, at least contend for the premiership like um, fill out other teams this year. Um, I, I like their squad. I think as well, you know, they've got a great coach in Trent Robinson who knows his way and knows um, a lot about success. So I expect a big season from the Roosters. Like, I really think they're going to go well this year and will be in the top four. Last year, they had a lot of, a lot of injuries, you know, losing a lot of the key players with injury and all that. But I think if they can keep those players back in the field this year and um, are a bit more lucky with injury luck and lucky with suspensions, then I think the Roosters will... Um, Definitely, um, yeah, be more competitive, a bit more dangerous to some teams, and we'll definitely, um, you know, have a big 2022 season. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Roosters go with everyone being back in, back in the paddock. But, um, yeah, look, I think Roosters will do well, and I think they'll come second place, in my opinion. And this year, I'm predicting the minor premiers to be the Penrith Panthers, um, as well as known as the uh, last year's premiers. So the, the reigning champs. I think they'll um, claim first spot for this year. I just think they've got a great team with... You know, heaps of quality players and such good skill for players as well. They're a young team, but, you know, at the same time, those players are just freaks. And, you know, you, you can't say they don't have a talented squad and don't have a, a great team because they do. And I believe that team is going to go really well again in, uh, this season, 2022. Um, they'll definitely contend for the premiership as well. I've seen going back to back, but I'm not going to reveal that yet, uh, my premiership uh, prediction. But, yeah, look, the, the Panthers will go well. I really think they'll... Um, They'll uh, yeah, be competitive for another season. And, you know, players like Luai Cleary are a very good combination. You know, Dylan Edwards is, has improved massively as a player. Um, their forward pack's strong. Their back line's pretty uh, good as well. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty much an all-star sort of team. So, you know, Panthers for me will go really well and we'll get, we'll get first place. But, guys, that brings an end to my ladder prediction for 2022. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. But if you enjoyed, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.